Hello everyone, Piers from Piers Invest Plays here today. In May 2021, AT&T announced two major things. First, a major restructuring to prepare for its future and focus on its core business, which is telecommunications. Second, a dividend cut. It seems investors only heard of dividend cut and have been punishing its stock since then. Now it is trading at the lowest price point that it has seen in the last five years. Is this trend going to continue or we can expect a higher price in the future? In this video, we will understand its business, its financials, its future outlook, review its charts using Elliott Wave Theory and see if we can make money. So stick around, I think you'll like what I have in store for you today. at and ticker T. at and is an American multinational conglomerate holding company that is Delaware registered but headquartered in downtown Dallas, Texas. It is the world's largest telecommunications company. It is also the largest provider of mobile telephone services in the US. It's incredible, no matter what at and does, it's never good enough for Mr. Market or the investment community. at and stock price is simply too cheap. I guess people are allergic to a company with its own printing press, generating billions in free cash flow. With the share price trending lower and the amount of negative sentiment from the investment community, the question becomes, what does T or at and have to do to gain the respect of the market? In Q2 2021, AT&T continued to see wireless, fiber, and HBO Max subscribers increase while generating the type of numbers other businesses would be jealous of. In Q2 2021, AT&T delivered $44 billion in revenue, increasing 7.6%. Its EPS jumped 7.2% to $0.89 cents and generated $10.9 billion in cash from operations. Also, AT&T generated $7 billion in free cash flow. Analyzed, that's $28 billion in free cash flow. AT&T's core business has continued to see quarter over quarter postpaid phone subscriptions and fiber subscribers increase. Since Q2 2020, AT&T has sub sequentially added subscribers each quarter as subscribers have increased from 62.9 million to 65.9 million, 65.5 million year over year on the postpaid phone subscribers. On the fiber side, AT&T continues to grow, adding 1.1 million subscribers year over year. This is another category that has increased quarter over quarter in the past year. AT&T's largest growth comes from HBO Max and HBO subscribers, as this category has increased by 10.7 million users year over year. At the end of Q2, 2021, HBO Max and HBO had 47 million domestic subscribers. Churn rates have decreased, leading to increased customer satisfaction and have positioned AT&T for future growth. In Q2 alone, AT&T added nearly 800,000 postpaid phones, the best Q2 in more than a decade. AT&T has raised its expectations on HBO Max and now believes it will reach 70 to 73 million global subscribers by the end of 2021. AT&T is spinning off WarnerMedia and merging it with Discovery to form a new company. AT&T's shareholders would receive stock representing 71% of the new company. Discovery shareholders would own 29% of the new company. If you have 10 AT&T stocks, you will get 7.1 stocks of the new company. And if you have 100 AT&T stocks, you'll get 71 stocks of the new company. At the end of the day, 
current shareholders of AT&T will own their legacy stocks and stocks in the newly formed company. This new company of WarnerMedia Plus Discovery is expected to generate $52 billion in revenue, $14 billion in adjusted EBITDA, and a free cash flow conversion rate of 60% in the fiscal year 2023. After the spin-off, AT&T still looks like a cash generating machine, focused on communications with less debt and a stronger balance sheet. In the first six months of 2021, AT&T's communication segment generated $56.31 billion in revenue, $22.84 billion in EBITDA, and $14.71 billion in operating income. If AT&T were to replicate this in the second half of 2021, the communications business segment would finish this year with $112 billion in revenue, $46 billion in EBITDA, and $29 billion in operating income. AT&T is getting $43 billion through a combination of cash, debt securities, and Warner Media's retention of certain debt through the spin-off, which will decrease their leverage and strengthen the balance sheet. So AT&T is going to do just fine without the media business. As I said earlier, the financials for AT&T are looking good and good. Revenue, gross profit, EBITDA, net income, EPS, earnings per share are all looking good. My final thoughts on AT&T are that AT&T dividend for its common shares now stands at 52 cents per share quarterly or $2.08 per year. At its current price, that amounts to a cash return of 7.5%, which is by far the highest in the market. To put the payout into perspective, the average dividend yield for the S&P 500 is 1.3%. And AT&T has been paying dividends since 1983 and is also increasing them year. Recently, AT&T announced that it will cut its dividend yield to 4%. Due to this, there has been knee-jerk reaction, and the stock is trading around the lowest price in five years. With its shares still more than 54% below the five-year high, the stock price has plenty of room to run, even more incentive to buy AT&T now. This is also indicative in the charts where I see the stock price to increase considerably in the next four to six years. Looking at the charts for AT&T, the bull run that started in way back in 1984 is still not over. It is, it has completed its first two waves and currently is, it is in its third super cycle wave. If we look deeper in this third super cycle, we can see that the first two waves are completed and currently it is in wave three and if we dive deeper further we can see that again the first two waves are completed and now AT&T seems to be marching should be marching higher I expect the first price higher would be $59.29 where you should expect a healthy pullback bringing the price down to $46.38 after that price point you should you can expect wave 5 to take the price higher to $67.34, which should terminate or end this wave 3. But the story is not over yet. At this point, I expect again a healthy pullback bringing the price down to $57.39. From this point on, wave 5 should take the price to $83.09. Here you go. This is your playbook to enter and exit AT&T stock at different price points. My recommendation is to buy now. AT&T offers a very good entry point now and just hold it for the next four to six years to get at least 200% profit in the next four to six years. Let's summarize now. As I said earlier, current stock price offers excellent entry. Long term, which is 4 to 6 years, 
I expect the price to be $83.09, which translates into 200% profit. AT&T pays 7.5% dividend, which is on top of the growth in the stock price. Even after it cuts the dividend to 4%, it is still very good. Free 7.1 stocks of the new company, which is going to be combination of modern media and discovery. So if you have 10 AT&T stocks, you will get 7.1 stocks of the new company. And if you have 100 AT&T stocks, you will get 71 stocks of the new company. At the end of the day, current shareholders of AT&T will own their legacy stocks, meaning their current AT&T stocks, and also will own the stocks in the newly formed company, which is WarnerMedia Plus and Discovery. It's a win-win situation. What do you think of this analysis? Please leave me a comment and let me know. As always, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with your friends and family. Until then, bye-bye.